Hello, it's the Power BI guy, and today I'll be covering five rookie mistakes I often see juniors do in Power BI, and this leads to a lot of pain. So make sure you avoid doing these, and it's just bad practice. So the first thing I often see is people go into Power Query and they make a lot of transformations. That's completely fine, but what tends to happen is those transformations are not organized and we have a lot of duplicate steps. So for example, you rename your columns and then you do a, a split and then you rename your columns again. Well, you don't have to have two separate steps or renaming the same or different columns. You could do that in one step, but people don't go back and clear up the applied transformations. This causes a lot of pain when you're taking over a report because all of these different steps, they're doing the same thing. They've not been renamed and organized. It's just a pain. So make sure you actually go back to your applied steps and reduce them where you can. You can go to the code and add more fields. People don't like going into the M script. They're a little bit scared. It's really simple to do. Just go back through your applied steps and make sure you're not doing duplicates. So that's number one. So the second thing that I often see juniors do, they use calculated columns far too often. This really bloats your data model because it's physical storage. When you create a calculated column, it is storing those results in memory and that is going to bloat your data sets. And it's fine, there are scenarios for it, but when people don't understand iterator functions and they refer back to calculated columns instead of creating measures, that can really bloat your model. So what you want to do is make sure you understand when to use a calculated column, when to use measures, and simply just understand iterator functions because that is generally why people use calculated columns instead of measures. It can cause a lot of issues. It can make your data models go huge. So you really want to avoid this. So that's number two. So number three, and this is less technical, more theory. I often see juniors cramp a lot of information into their reports. They're not focused, so their pages have a lot of visuals and there's just poor UI. As a BI developer or someone that's producing Power BI reports, they have to have purpose. Your pages can't be overloaded with information. They have to be very purposeful. They have to have the right visuals. So for example, for time series where you're showing uh, data against a certain time period, use a line chart, don't use a bar chart. It's really simple things like that or having about 15 visuals on one page. You're overloading the users, it's bad practice. Practice. So really brush up on your report theory and understanding how to tell a story of data. It sounds like a buzzword, but when you're presenting information, it has to be concise, it has to have meaning, and it has to be presented well. If you're not doing that, no one cares about how your code looks. Maybe your manager does, but your end users don't. So really make sure you present your information in the correct manner. So number four, and this is massive, is not understanding modeling and the concepts of relationships. So relationships are fundamental Power BI. Instead of having a massive wide table, you often have a lookup table, for example. It's not called a lookup, but let's just say that. You have a lookup table. Instead of joining them, and I see people do that often, you can build relationships. It's really important you understand one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. Doing that will save you a lot of pain in the future when it comes to your calculations, when it comes to your refreshes, and just when it comes to pretty much anything, you want to have your relationships and understand modeling. Now, the concept of fact and dimension tables, that's often not known, so you really have to brush up on that. I do have a really neat video on fact and dimension, so if you want to watch that, that's that, but that's really important. Modeling is huge when it comes to development, and you're just a report builder if you just put visuals together, but as soon as you understand modeling, your career can really grow because that's less so just report development, that's design, that's sort of data analytics. There's a lot of theory that goes into it. So pick up your data modeling and understand how that works. And number five, people not documenting their data sets. When you build your Power BI reports, it might seem simple at first, but trust me, as those data sets grow and people try to pick up that work, if you don't document what the model is one, what the measures are doing, what order they might work in, because sometimes you have a sequence of measures, what variables might be doing, it makes it really difficult to pick up a Power BI report. They tend to not comment in their code, so when they're writing DAX, they're not writing comments or what they're referring to. It can make it really difficult. You can tell someone's a bit more seasoned when they write their measures, they organize them into folders, then they comment on their code. It just makes it a lot easier. So everyone will thank you for it and your future sort of replacement in your role, they will thank you for it as well. So that's really important.